Hello students, welcome to AC Engineering channel. In this video, we will see single phase induction motor. So in the last two videos, we completed construction and working principle of three phase induction motor. In this video, we will see single phase induction motor construction and working principle. So before entering into this video, you just recollect the points what we discussed in a three phase induction motor for a ease of convenience. So single phase induction motor is similar to that of a three phase induction motor in which the stator has a single phase supply. It receives single phase supply. And most familiar to all electric motors are having single phase motors. Why? Because of its uh, simple construction, then reliable and easy maintenance. So it is uh, found for a wide range of applications like vacuum cleaners, fans, washing machine, centrifugal pumps, blowers and small toys etc. holding single phase induction motor. With the small introduction, we enter into the construction of a single phase induction motor. See as far as the construction, it has a two basic parts via stator and rotor. Similar to the three phase induction motor, but instead of the stator receives only the single phase AC supply. So the stator has a laminated construction made up of stampings with iron core. The stampings are slatted in the periphery called the stator winding or main winding. And this is excited by single phase AC supply. Here a question arised in a mind. What is the meaning of excitation? Excitation means magnetizing the coils by giving an external supply. Excitation means magnetizing. Then the laminated construction keeps the iron loss minimum and the stampings are made up of silicon steel. So it minimizes the hysteresis losses. When the supply is given to the stator winding, it produces an magnetic field it produces magnetic field in the definite number of poles so the number of poles for which the stator winding would decides the synchronous speed so we are all well aware that the synchronous speed is equal to 120 f by p so here in an induction motor never rotates at the synchronous speed but it rotates slightly less than the synchronous speed so here we have a stator winding rotor winding with laminated core and it has an iron bars and the rings to short circuit the bars and the stator slats with uh, windings and here we have uh, two windings via main winding and a starting winding. So the stator explanation is given with enough points for a preliminary understanding how it is made up of and how the supply or what kind of a supply the stator receives. And it extends with the speed, synchronous speed. It is not rotates, uh, means it never rotates with a synchronous speed as far as n is equal to 120 f by p, but it rotates slightly less than the synchronous speed. Then the rotor. So here the rotor construction is uh, seems to be the squirrel cage type. In this type of rotor, it consists of long copper or aluminium bars which are placed on the slots. The bars are permanently shorted at both the ends, shorted at both the ends with the help of end ring. And as the bars are permanently shorted, so the entire resistance is very small. The air gap between the stator and rotor is kept uniform as far as possible, as small as possible. So this is a catch type construction and that is a symbolic representation front view. 
so these are all the points we need to list it out at a theoretical portion for a rotor it's a squirrel cage rotor and it is permanently ended up with an end rings called the slip rings the bars are permanently shorter and air gap is between stator and rotor is uniform and as small as possible that's it and construction completed and then principle and working of a single phase induction motor here in case of single phase induction motor the supply is in single phase so the single phase supply is not capable to produce a rotating flux so for producing and rotating flux we need at least two fluxes for this reason single phase induction motor is not a self starting motor if so how to make an single phase induction induction motor as a self starting motor so that we go for an basic principle of double field revolving theory so because of implementing a double field revolving theory the single phase induction motor creates its rotating flux so we'll explain what a double field revolving theory i already told you it is not self starting so that we need an extra winding to start that extra winding is called as an axillary or starting winding see we already have an main winding so these two windings are placed 90 degree electrically apart from each other and put in an parallel so that the rotating field is produced this is an one line concept behind an double field revolving theory okay we'll have an explanation over a double field revolving theory see according to this theory any alternating quantity can be resolved into two components which rotates in opposite direction see let it be phi m so phi m is a maximum magnitude the stator winding produces and the each component having magnitude as half of the maximum magnitude of the alternating flux means phi m by 2 and phi m by 2 so the resultant of the two fields is phi m cos theta thus the resultant field varies according to the cosine of an angle cosine of an angle plus theta minus theta the two revolving fields will produce a torque in opposite direction plus theta minus theta let the two revolving fields be field number 1 and field number 2 let the field number 1 rotates in clockwise direction field number 1 rotates in clockwise direction and the field number 2 rotates in anti clockwise direction so the clockwise torque is plotted as an positive and the anti clockwise is plotted as an negative these two fluxes produces an rotating flux thus according to double field revolving theory here a rotating magnetic field is produced in a single phase induction motor and a torque developed it rotates so that's it on construction and the working principle of double field revolving theory how it makes sense single phase induction motor is a self starting thank you students